We praise You, Lord God. Lift your hands. Keep worshiping Him. He's holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's righteous. He's awesome. He's magnificent. He is more than enough. Lord Jesus, you are more than enough. The creator of everything that we see is more than enough, is more than whatever it is that we are going through. He is more than enough. God the Father, who, can, who holds the universe in His hand, is more than enough. Thank You, Lord Jesus. Thank You, Lord. Today's topic is about, or this month's topic is faith, hope, and love. Last night, thank you, Jesus, said he gave me the words to speak about love. And today, by the same grace, the same love, the same awesome power, he'll give me the words to speak. He'll speak to somebody, somebody here, somebody watching, he'll speak to somebody about the hope that we find in Christ Jesus. Because Christ Jesus is the hope of glory. He is everything that we need. In Him, we live and move and have our being. In Him is just everything that we could possibly need. The very breath that we breathe comes from Jesus. The strength that we have to walk, to talk, to wake up each and every day comes from Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, for that hope. We thank you, Lord God, for that awesome truth. Heavenly Father, I come before you today prepared to submit. Lord God, use this clay pot to speak to whomever you will. Lord God, use, just use my mouth to minister to your people. You have the words, Lord Jesus. I pray that somebody will hear. I pray that somebody will turn from their wicked ways. And I turn, pray that somebody will, that, that this message that God's going to deliver is going to seep into somebody's heart. Father God, all of you, none of me, please bring back everything that you had me med meditate on and what you gave me. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it talks about, Pastor Mike talked about this this morning, and I talked about it last night, that you got faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. You could spend a considerable amount of time on each individual subject, on faith, on hope, and on love. But, but the greatest is love. I touched on last night that if you, if you could do everything that this book says that we can do, but you don't have love within your heart to do it, then it, it's nothing. So, God challenged me and He challenged everybody here that was here last night to walk in love. No matter if somebody deserves it or not, walk in love. Speak love. Seek God, because God is love. And he is, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. So now, now it comes to hope. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. There, once again, there are many, 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 many verses in the Bible, many scriptures that talk about hope. And time permitting, by the grace of God, I'll share those scriptures, just a small fragment. 
Oh, Lord Jesus, have your way. Have your way in this service. Have your way in every service that comes hereafter. I give you all praise and all honor and all glory. Chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. We are the children of God. The ones that are actively seeking Jesus in His righteousness and His love are called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know Jesus. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when Jesus is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. A lot of people stop there. They, for, they tend to forget verse 3, which is kind of like the, the period at the end of a sentence. Verse 3, And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Let me reread that. And everyone who has this hope in Jesus purifies himself just as Jesus is pure. Jesus is pure. He is righteous. He is holy. In Him there is nothing evil, but everything good. So, if you're going through something today, whatever it is, Jesus wants to help you. But you need to cry out to Jesus for that help. You need to acknowledge that Jesus is the answer to the problem. And it has, it is, it is a truth that escaped me for a quarter of my life. I'm sorry, for 25 years of my life. Let me rephrase that, because I'm not 100 years old. <laughs> And, and um, even though that has escaped me so much, thank God that He preserved me to come to realize that truth and that hope. My hope is found in Christ Jesus. And I will be quick to tell you, I would never have thought that I would be doing this or singing for anybody, let alone God. Because, you know, I, I was all about myself. I didn't want nothing to do with anybody else. Just me, me, myself, and I. That was, that was my trinity at that time. Me, myself, and I. And there's a lot of people out there who can say the exact same thing that I said. Whether it be, there are even some believers who still have that thinking. And... I'm here to tell you that God is so much more. He's so much better. He's so holier. Because God is love. Everything, everything good is found in Him. Truth, love, life, peace, joy. You need some joy? Ask Jesus. He will give you joy. God... God spoke through me yesterday, and He said that if you love me, if, if you love Jesus, keep His commandments. By this you will abide in the love of Christ. And the joy that Jesus has will be put upon you. If you love Jesus, abide in His commandments, and as a byproduct, you will have the joy of Christ in you. And I thank God for that every day, because without the joy of Jesus, oh, it would just be so much of a struggle, even more than it already is. I like throughout the course of this, this message, I like to present two questions. 
that I would really like to go into a little bit of depth to answer. First one, what is hope? I'll answer that a little bit later, Lord willing. The second one, most of us already know this, who do we have hope in? The answer to that second one is Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. Titus chapter 2, starting at verse 11. Because Jesus is just so awesome. He is, and all the time, all the time, Titus, verse 2. I'm sorry, chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed, every wicked work, every form of iniquity, and purify himself, his own special people, zealous for good works. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the death and resurrection. Thank you, Lord Jesus, of everything that you have done. Because you're just, you're just so magnificent. I just can't, I can sit here and say to I'm, to I'm blue in the face that Jesus is the hope of glory. That Jesus is our hope. He is our all in all. He is everything that we need and so much more. He is that. Lord God, I pray that you wake up the church to that realization. Everything that we have comes from Jesus. Everything. Even if you want to acknowledge it or not. Everything comes from Jesus. Hebrews chapter 6, starting at verse 17. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise the immutability of His counsel. Immutability is just a fancy word to say unchangeable. Confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things or by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible. Say impossible. Impossible. For God to lie. God can't lie. That we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope, verse 19, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters The presence behind the veil. The hope that we have in Jesus allows us to enter into His presence. Allows us to enter into the Holy of Holies, which only the high priest could do. But have hope in Jesus and you can do it. I can do it. Every believer who lays their hope on the Lord Jesus Christ can enter into the veil can enter into the Holy of Holies, can enter into the presence of the King. And that should be something to shout about. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord, that only one person in the Old Testament could do that. The high priest. But now everybody can do that because the veil has been torn. Verse 20. Where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. 
So Jesus has already entered in. And he has already became the high priest. And if we have hope in Jesus, we are living and walking in Jesus. So therefore, if we, if we have our hope and our trust and our faith in Jesus, we can enter in too. Because the, Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall also do, and greater works than these shall you do. So we can enter into the presence. Thank you, Jesus. That is just an awesome thing. Because in the Old Testament, if you entered into the Holy of Holies and you were unclean, as soon as you stepped foot, you were struck dead. God saw you as unclean and unfit. And by the, the Old Covenant, if you were unclean, you, you, you couldn't touch anything that was holy. But now that we have faith, love, trust, hope in Christ, in Jesus, He is the hope. He is love. If we have all, that things, all those things in Him, we can enter into the presence. Thank you, Jesus. We can enter into unending love, overwhelming joy, peace that passes all understanding. I could go on for the rest of the sermon describing characteristics about who Jesus is and what He can do. But I'm only going to focus on hope. So, I posed the question earlier, what is hope? Hope is answered in Romans chapter 8, verse 24. Because Jesus is the hope of glory. Jesus is my hope, your hope, everybody's hope, everybody here. Jesus is our hope. But let me, let me just describe what's going on here. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. For we were saved in this hope, Christ Jesus, our hope of glory. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? For instance... The car that you drive. You, you're not hoping for a car because you already have one. You might be hoping for a, let's just say, a new car, but you can't see that new car. You might be hoping for whatever it is, new house. You might be hoping for even the presence of Jesus Christ, but you can't see him until He manifests Himself to you. Then, that hope is made full, because you see Him. You can feel His presence. He is there. But if we hope for what we do not see, verse 25, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. We eagerly wait for Jesus Christ. We eagerly wait for what we don't see because we know it's coming. We know Jesus is coming because Jesus said He will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Jesus. I know He's here. I know it. Can I see Him? In the Spirit I can. And I know He's here. How do I know? Because wherever two or three are gathered together in His name, He is here! He is here. But I hope for that day where I'm able to spend forever with Him and God the Father. I know there's work that I need to do, and I know there's work that you all have to do too. But the driving force is the love that I have for Christ Jesus. 
the hope of glory. I thank You, Lord, for that hope. I thank You, Lord, for that love. You are just so awesome. If we flip a couple pages in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, there's a further explanation. Verse 1, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. Your glory is just awesome. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope you've gone through the trials and tribulations, it's going to produce all these things. Perseverance. I mean, you, you'll get persecuted for following Jesus. I've gotten persecuted. Jesus was persecuted. So what makes us think that we're any different? Jesus was paraded around like a lamb to the slaughter. And if, he, if, that, if persecution was done to him, what makes me think I'm any better? I'm going to suffer persecution. I'm going to suffer tribulation, trials, just because I call on the name of Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. In Him I live and move and have my being. But all those tribulations produces perseverance, then character, and then hope. And where does our hope lie? In Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. Now hope does not disappoint in verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given us. Wow. So, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces per perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. And once you get to the hope, the hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Wow. Don't worry, that one will come to you later. <laughs> It took me a while to understand that one as well. It is all good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And even, I mean, we look through the Bible and we see, we see people that has been through numerous trials and tribulations. I mean, starting, really starting from Adam and going all the way to, to Jesus and beyond the 12 apostles, Paul. I mean, it continues to this day. But how we respond to trials and tribulations really speaks on where we are spiritually. It really speaks on how strong we are in the faith. If, if just for an example, if we're out here driving around and someone cuts us off and we want to we want to get back at somebody, where's your faith? Where's your love? Where's your hope? Is that really how Christ Jesus would have handled that situation? No, it's not. Another example, if somebody says something that's just a total, absolute lie about you, and other people believe it and start to persecute you for it, how, how do you respond to that? Are you going to do the same thing? Are you going to backbite? Are you going to moan, gripe, and complain? Are you? Some people do. I'm going to do everything in my power not to, and I like to believe that everybody here would, not do, would do the same thing. But 
I know that some, sometimes life gets to us. I know that. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm living through life just like everybody else. But I say all that to say that everything that we've gone through, everything that we will go through, and everything that is going on with us today, the more that we speak and look to Christ as our Savior, as our hope for love, for peace, for joy, He will calm the sea. The, the best illustration is Peter walking, out, walking on the water to Jesus. Jesus see, Peter sees Jesus out on, the, out on the, the raging sea. The raging sea, you can, you can substitute that for the trials of life. So Peter said to Jesus, If that is you, Lord, bid me to come. Jesus said, Come. Come into the trials. Come into the raging sea. Come into the midst of the storm. And this is no small storm either. Come into the midst of the storm, but keep your eyes focused on Him. Peter kept his eyes focused on Him, and what was he doing? He was walking on the water. He was walking on the trials, the tribulations. He was walking through the raging sea on top of it until he got his eyes off of Christ. What did he do then? He started to sink. He started to get consumed by the trials. He started to get consumed by the storm of life. But thank God he had enough presence of mind to say, Jesus, help me! Some of us are right there right now. Everything is just going on around us like a hurricane. We just need to lift up our eyes, lift up our hands and say, Jesus, help me. And he will help you. Because Jesus reached down, pulled Peter out of the water, and they both got into the boat. Thank you, Lord, for that. Psalm 119. Verse 145. This is Old Testament, and they, you know, we sometimes, I'm ashamed to say, but we take the Holy Spirit for granted because we've, all, you know, it's, we've always had that. But in the Old Testament, they did not have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of them. They, were, they had the Holy Spirit wrapped about them like a coat, like a mantle, you know, and it, 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 but the things that the people did during the Old Testament is very, I look back on it, it's very inspirational because these people had great faith because they didn't have the Holy Spirit dwelling in their hearts. And yet they did all these things. Elijah, for example, David, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, just to name a few. Noah even. I mean, he never saw rain at all. But he knew that rain was coming because God told him. And he preached for 100 years that rain was coming and people thought that he was crazy. Psalm 119, 145. I cry out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statues. Statues is um, principles, commandments. I cry out to you, save me and I will keep your testimonies. I rise before the dawn of the morning and cry for help. I hope in your word. My eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice according to your loving kindness. O oh Lord, revive me according to your justice. Those are words that just speak, speak volumes about the psalmist, about where his faith was. I mean, how many times have we cried out, you know, when we got born again, 
Help me, O Lord. Save me and I'll keep your testimonies. How many times have we cried out, Help me. Save me. We continuously do it. But he, this, the psalmist here in 147 says, I hope in your word. His words are life and they are truth. Keep your hope in your mind and your eyes and your heart set on Christ Jesus and He will never fail you. He will always be there for you. He will always be there. And, and the love that He poured out on you, He already proved His love to you. Now we need to prove our love for Him. We need to, because Jesus' two greatest commandments you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the first and greatest commandment. The second one is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And we keep, we just keep those, we have to meditate on these night and day because, you know, the, the trials of life just... After a while, they just start beating you down. And, um, but that's where we need to meditate on the Word. That's where we need to read the Bible. That's where we need to stay in our prayer closet when it feels like the world has just been pummeling us. That's when we need to seek God even more. Because Jesus said, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And we can, we can, put, we can put all our eggs into that basket because Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our all in all. Jeremiah 17 is a, in verses 5 through 8, is a, like, it's like a contrast of those who have hope and those who don't. Starting at verse 5, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. That's pretty harsh words. Like a shrub in the desert. A shrub in the desert, begging for water, clinging to life, all dried up and withered. How many times have you felt like a shrub in the desert? I'm going to say I have. I can't speak for everybody. But I have felt like a shrub in the desert. Verse 7. Now here's, here's the flip. That was with the man who does not have any hope. Here's verse 7. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Hallelujah to the King. Blessed is the man, say blessed, blessed. is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Whose hope is the Lord? Jesus. If you hope in the Lord, what, you, what will you be like? You'll be like a tree planted by waters, spreads out its roots by the river, will not fear when heat comes, and whose leaves will always be green. It will not be anxious in the year of drought. How many people have suffered drought? Whether it be, whether it be financially, whether it be crop-wise, harvest, whether it be whatever, relationships, whatever, 
How many people have experienced drought? We've all experienced drought. But our hope is God. Our hope is Jesus. Because if we hope in Him, we won't be anxious. We will not fear when heat comes, when persecution comes, when trials come, when tribulations come. We will not fear because God is mighty. God is able. God is awesome. Can I get amen? God is awesome. Hallelujah. Lamentations 3, chapter 3. Starting at verse 22. I know I'm jumping around a lot. But there's just so much to cover. So little time to do it. Time's running out. Both in this sermon and in the world. Time is running out. We have got, we have got to set our hearts and our minds to Christ Jesus. Because He is the only one that is going to be able to stand... When, when things just go absolutely crazy, everybody who has their hope and their trust and their love in Jesus are, are going to be the only ones that have any, any sense. In verse 22, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because His compassion fails not. His compassion doesn't fail. They are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in Him. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I hope in Him. The Lord's mercies, we are, through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because His compassion does not fail. Thank you, Lord. I encourage everybody that when, whenever persecution comes, just thank God that He is able to deliver everybody out of the persecution because our hope is in Him. Our trust is in Him. Our life is in Him. We thank you, Lord, for that life. Don't, don't stop. Life will get hard. Don't ever stop trusting in Jesus. Don't ever stop believing in Jesus. It's going to be a struggle at times. Yes, I know, I've been there. But I can only speak from personal experience that I am going to, I have committed myself to give my all to Christ Jesus no matter what may come no matter what persecution may come, no matter what trial may come, no matter what is laying, laying around the corner for me. And I encourage everybody to do the same thing. Jesus will not fail. He will not fail. He is faithful and true. God the Father can fit the universe in His hand. Look at your hand. From the, from the baby finger to the thumb. That's how big the universe is to God. And, and we're sitting here thinking, God, this problem is too big for God. How silly does that sound? I've, I've had to repent of that many times. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord. Blessed are those whose hope is in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the hope. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for faith, hope, and love. We thank you, Lord, for these gifts. That with them, that we may endure this life and that we may help other people.
Father God, please give each of us a fire, a passion, and a zest for you, O Lord Jesus. Fill us to overflowing. And we praise your name. In Jesus' name, these things I pray. Amen. Well, if anybody would like prayer, I would be more than happy and humble to pray for you, pray with you. God bless you all.